So this is what we're working on. I've used the decoupage paper on this tabletop, which only covered so far. Um, it only took, it went about, because it's quite a large, like, it's not a dining room, but it's quite a large table. So it's kind of finishes where that paper is. And then I had to extend the painting. Now I have spent a bit of time on it last night, not much, and I'm gonna finish it in front of you. I thought that would be um, the best idea. So um, I'll give you an idea on how to extend uh, a picture and just talk to you a little bit about uh, the advantages of actually doing this. Because as a, as a painter, as an artist, um, this is what I used to do in my early days. I used to take master painters and um, copy them uh, for my own reference. I, I didn't sell them, um, but uh, I'd copy them to learn how they painted because as you paint their paintings or copy their paintings, you kind of get inside the head of the artist and it gives you an idea how, how they paint. Now, this was really fun. I started this... Um, after working for a few days constantly on a triple portrait I'm doing and I thought oh, I'll just play a little bit with this and, and it was really really fun because it's a very loose painting but it's a very beautiful painting um, <clears throat> so I'll just explain what I did with the paper there is a tutorial on how I apply the papers these papers are available on my website as are all the paints and everything um, but this, I applied this with a wet method. So I used artisan um, gloss top coat, brushed it on and, um, oh, actually, did I do glue on this one? No, I tested, mm, I think I tested diluted, I tested glue on this one. Um, it didn't work as well as the top coat, actually. That's what I have been using. Uh, so I've moulded it around the edges. I have started painting into this image as well. Uh, which I will do in front of you as well, and you'll see it just really lift out. <laughs> Not to discredit the the master painter, <laughs> which is the painter was Robert Reed. Um, he's a painter from the mid 18th century. Uh, this painting is called Fleur de Lis, uh, and um, beautiful colours. Uh, and but I just want the prints a little bit dull. Oh, well, the print. The print's probably right, but um, I'm just, I want to bring it out even further. So I've got a little book here that um, I'll pop down the colours as I mix them just for later reference. And I'll show you the colours I'm using to match up. And I'll show you what I've done um, to start with. So originally I put the, I put the piece of paper down. It came to, I'm just trying to find where it is. Came to about there. Yeah, it came to about there. I can't see it now. Um, and I used the offcuts from from the edges. I used those pieces of paper and put them on here just like a collage and put it on the side. And last night I've painted in that side. So you can see the iris is over there. So that's the print. And her skirt was cut off. So I've been painting out her skirt and painting some irises and a bit of back background there. So I'll hold it right up so you can see. And not using a lot of colours. So these are the colours, um, I'll whiz you around, these are the colours I'm using. So I'm using navy. This is chalk paint, provincial for the yellow. That's my watercolour, uh, my watercolour, my water bottle. Um, some cream brulee and Merlot, and then a bit of Arctic white, which is almost pure white, just for lightening up. So they're the basic colors that I'm using to match in the print. So from that side to that side, okay? So um, it's just blocked in, it's not refined yet, and I'm gonna do that now. I'll, I'll put you on a stand, so I'm hands-free. Uh, I've just poured the paint. There's a lot of dried paint in there, but they're, they're sitting in there, the paints. I'm not using any of the other colours. They're all dried up. Um, that's just a chocolate box <laughs> tray that I'm using. Right. Now, I worked very, very quickly with this. I had Last night I had, oh, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes or something. So, so I just played 
Um, I spent a bit of time mixing the colours, making sure I was using the right colours, which I was. Um, so basically, I'm using, just making sure I can see you. Basically, I'm using those basic colours, and I'm in this is mainly greens, blues, and purples. And then you've got those muted um, yellows. So to, to break it down really, really basically. So the navy is my blue, the provincial is my yellow, uh, the red was Merlot, that's my red. And I'm using the um, creme brulee as the flesh color and a kind of yellow. Uh, and then when we need purple, we blend the blue and the red together. When we need the green colours, the blue and the yellow together. Okay, so it's basically blues, purples by the, adding the blue and the red, and the greens by adding the blue and the green, uh, the yellow and yellow. So it's as simple as that. That's that's. As, you just think in those colours, blues, purples, greens, yellows. There is a bit of pink in there, but so we're having variations of those. So I'll keep this here so you can kind of see. So I want you to see the thinking process in, in this. So these dark areas, I'm pretty much, I'm using the, the blue the navy, and if I want it to go deeper, I add a little bit of the red. It makes it, it makes it look darker. So I'm going to hold this in my hand because it'll be easier. All right. So I've added this last night. I added a bit of sunshine around her. I added these pieces here and here. Um, so I added a little bit over top of the print to make these things um, light up a bit more. Um, I've added this part here and all of this skirt and all of here. Um, and there's little, just little touches on that, but not a lot on that yet, just little bits. Okay, so I'll be a bit quiet now. I'll just focus and I'll work on the flowers a bit because they, they really need work. There's my palette. Uh, there it is. <clears throat> I'm just using a bit of cardboard covered in Glabrev so I can throw it out. So, what do we need? We want... Um, and when you mix you mix it up. Can you see that palette? Mix it up and then you just kind of hold it up to up to your this side and then you know you're pretty safe to go across and add that colour and you're carrying the colours from here across to there. Now this is very loosely painted so it's very non nondescript. It's just that it's an impressionistic type painting, so you um, you're only really creating a impression. You don't have to really render it um, exactly. So I don't really need to even look at any flowers or that. I'll just look at the shapes that the artist has formed here and mimic those shapes across, almost like a pattern. You could use reference, but I'm. Um, Showing you just how to bounce off what's already there. And I'm just trying to make sure they're all quite individual, not too too much the same. Alright, so add a bit of that. While I've got that colour, I'll look around and go, where else can I add that? Get in the skirt, anything that's um, 
anything that's looking like I've painted and it doesn't quite belong, I can use that colour because I know he would have used that colour. You can break up those areas. I did enjoy this so much last night, I thought, oh, I just, I really would love to do one without a decoupage in this style with this colour palette. It's just a beautiful, what do you think? It's just, it's a lovely, um, I think it's a beautiful combination of colours. So I'm just adding a bit of the Arctic White just to lighten that up, that same colour up, to give it a bit of tonal variation. My mum would love this one, I reckon, because she just she grows irises. It's a whole collection. Can I put that? Um, 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 um. I think I'll just add. Okay, so this is the print I'm painting into here. That wasn't, but it is here. I'm just going to lift out that flower a bit more. It's behind her, and it's. I'm kind of seeing it like it's in the sunlight, so I want it to really glisten, like it's reflecting the sunlight. And I'll make sure the same happens to her clothes, which we need a bit of the yellow. So I'm adding the yellow in. Whites always look bright with a bit of yellow. And I'll do that on her hair as well. Started to do this last night. That's too white. I'll have to take it down a bit. <clears throat> it needs to be close, closer to her hair, but not, yeah, not too different. It's not it's still too bright. So it's like backlit. He's done a bit of it here in the top of her dress. I'll just bring it out a bit more. Now I need to get a bit of uh, earthy colour in her hair, so I'm adding the red to the yellow, going down the orange track, and it's a bit bright, so I'm going to add the blue, which will knock it back a bit. Grab it off, and hopefully, I need to. bit more blue she when I'm looking close to the, the print's got a bit of um, blue in there a bit more it's not dark enough
There you go. I've blended in. I've blended it in, but lifted it out a bit. Now what I can do is I can deepen that behind her. Which needs to be a purpley blue. And that will lift her, lift her out. So watch what happens when I hit that in there. That will make her stand out a bit more. Put it there too. If you can hear that noise, it's my my dog's just below me and he's a frustrated that he hasn't scratched up his bed quite the way he likes it. It's swim swimpering. Okay, again, while I've got that colour on, I'll take it through over to this side. I'm back in with the purple. There's a lot of blue here and there's not so much over here, so I need to make this more purple. And I notice that the artist has a has a, a variation of dr like dry, almost like dry brush strokes as well as wet. So I need to I need to mimic that too. So I've got a bit of pink coming through here. <clears throat> that makes that pop a bit. through there. What I don't have beside me is a, a bowl of water to rinse my brush in, which probably wasn't a great, wasn't a good choice. I might have to grab it. It's hard to get clean colour if you can't brush, wash your brush out.
that's what I'm taking across. I should have been holding it up for you to show you, but I was just doing it by eye. So even, even though this side has several pieces of paper that kind of like stick partially together, it's, still, it's very difficult for me even to see this closely, to see where that is now. It's all kind of disappeared. Right, and she needs some yellow. I've got these little stems. Two in line with the one above it. Um, just do it on the side. And bring a little shoot up the side here, I think. Any questions? Okay, a little bit more and then I need to need to use some greens I think.
lights are a bit too bright. Needs another white flower or something here to balance it out a bit.
add some light to them. Dappled light. Getting there. What do you think?
Get a grain.
Has anyone to sleep yet? Making a bit of pinking because there's a little bit of pink through that foliage. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that for the minute. I can hear the car park really getting busy, so I can just see we'll probably I've got away with a bit here today. <coughs> Take you off the stand and give you a close up. It's hard to put it down. If things are fun, they're hard to put down. But that gives you an idea with just a few colours. Reed would be happy with that. Someone come and take the paintbrush out of my hands. 
Um, um, um. Sometimes those little bits just make such a big difference. Still, I've lost some of the really fine lines that he's got here, so I'll make sure there's some of that in there. Because it's not just a matter of mimicking colour, it's placement, composition, lines, tones. I think that'll do. <clears throat> At least for now. I'll have a mind break from it and then see if I need to add anything else, but otherwise, I think I've spilled something there. Nope. Let's put water on my hands. Now as this dries, too, as the paint dries, it kind of changes a little bit of tone, so when it gets varnished it'll sort of settle in a bit more, but, um, so there's the top. Going back from it, I'll just take you across here like that so you can see the brush strokes. So it's very almost abstract, the shapes, but in the original, it's like that too. It's very abstract, almost like patterns. So it was a matter of mimicking the patterns and the colors and the shapes. So there you go. Um, I, think, I think that's pretty right. I think I could seal it. I don't know if I can get you on an angle where you can kind of see dry paint as opposed to print. It's a bit tricky. Uh, you probably can see like that. Obviously that's all wet. Well, it's dry now, but, you know, it's all paint. But I've gone into little bits and pieces. But our lovely Lady with Iris is finished, I think. And I've painted the base purple too. So that's um, Native Violet, the new mineral paint from 
Madison. Okay.